I V M. Hello, hello, Amit. I won't be able to record today, yar. Arey, why? What happened, Cyrus? Ah, oh, man, I've got to do. Go to the bank. I have to open a new account. That document filing, profiling. You got to show this card, that card, this verification, that verification. Too many processes. Man, they should have to ease these things up, yar. There's no way a normal person can do this. Well, there is a way to do this. All you have to do is you can do all of this sitting at home if you have a Bank of Baroda account. Huh? But I have a Bank of Baroda account. Awesome. Then all you really need to do to avail of 95% of all retail banking services domestically, just download the Bob World app and use the banking services right at your fingertips. Oh, wow! Sorted. See you in the studio then. What a relief! Bank of Baroda. We live in your world. कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव Yes, welcome back to Cyrus says. Just want to mention when I say welcome back because got submerged. Cyrus says the entity the avatar has got submerged and sort of replaced by cock and bull. In political terms, it's almost like the bully Russia is cock and bull, and it's overshadowing the smaller player Ukraine, which is Cyrus says. So today we pulled out Cyrus says from our hat, our collective hat, and we've got a couple of people who are joining us. And hopefully, phones will be on silent throughout the show because only in place of work where I am, everybody's phones are on like it's a stock exchange, which it is. Before I. Mention the two lovely ladies who are coming on in about thirty seconds. Just want to mention in the rant section, as you know, inside it says we have a rant section. Um, had a huge fight with my daughter two days ago uh, because there was no Cyrus says I couldn't talk to you about it. But since this is therapy, let me be open and frank. A uh, huge fight. You see, I'll let me explain. Then you judge yourself whether I'm right or wrong. Uh, the daughter, fifteen years old, called me into the room, uh, summoned me like Elizabeth the fifth, and uh, told me whatever she had to say and instructed me about the next morning. we have a certain master servant relationship she finished saying that and said good night to me and i walked out of the room about 10 to 12 feet after which she said okay and also come back here take my water bottle and fill it now my point is once you finish a conversation and the person has physically left the geography it is not right to call them back i just have that genetic issue with that you know i just cannot bear to rewind and go back so i told her but now i've already crossed the threshold I've crossed the Rubicon, so to speak. I've reached where I have to reach. I, I can't go back now. I can go forward and get you a bottle of water, but I can't go back. Pick the bottle, go forward, and then go back. That's too much. I can't digest that. And we had a huge fight and a huge argument. So I just want to say, with Indians, this is a huge, this is a racial issue with me. Indians don't have a problem going back. They're always going back. I don't mean metaphorically and politically. That may or may not be true, but they're always happy to go back. But I'm not going back. I cannot go back. I believe in Temujin's philosophy. We go forward, uh, not the killing, but the rest of it. Sometimes it feels like all the weight of the world has fallen onto my shoulders, and it usually happens on my downtime while I'm enjoying a nice game of cricket. It's like my family realizes that I'm watching cricket and just rush to ruin it for me. Then my mom will come in ranting about some problem with the neighbors. My wife will come in shouting about how we need to redo our kitchen, plus also some problem with the neighbors. And my daughter will come in angry at me because the color of the new car we bought is not what she had wanted, which is apparently the biggest crime a father can commit. Plus, of course, some problem with the neighbors. Hmm. Ah, if only things could be just the same, even if something were to happen to me. Unless www.hdfclife.com select select done. Hmm. Things aren't so bad after all. Live calm with HDFC Life. Click to protect life. The Life Protect option protects your family from financial uncertainty. Visit hdfclife.com to know more and for terms and conditions. In the meantime, we'll go forward with this show and introduce to you a lovely uh, well we've got two lovely ladies on. Let's bring them on. There's a book that's just been released. Uh, Vandana Saxena Poria goes by three names like Shankar Hasan Loy, so she's obviously a music composer and there's Royal Padamsi who I've worked with for the last 25 years for no money and few clothing. You do get get us shoes when Joy Shoes used to sponsor. So I have got three to four pairs of shoes thanks to the praise I've done. Um but by the way, I, as usual I'll be talking like a train. So at any point you want to interrupt, please go ahead. Um Now let's get to the book first, Vandana. Hello and welcome to India. You're in England as we speak, or are you here? I've been living in India for 17 years, Saras. So I just realized it's four in the morning in England, so only an idiot would be on on the show. It'd be ridiculous. Yeah, so she's been living here, but the accent has been living so there. So hello from Pune. 
Yeah. Oh wow. Pe- people in Pune speak like that. Sound like that. It's wonderful. I love the English accent. If I was to get shot, you know, by a military squad, I wish it would be a British squad. I, j- I just the last words you hear would be like, "Okay, shoot the bastard." You know, and just beautiful. I'd be like, "One more time." Yeah, Let's go have a cup of tea. Do they do that before executions? After. <laughs> After. After. So it doesn't include the executed, sadly. Oops. All right. Um, let's first talk about the book before I forget anything else, because Ryal, this was supposed to be your show as well. But now that we're talking about the book, I thought we'll bring you back for your show because you have 250 other things to talk about. And Vandana will give you your own show. Don't you worry. You will get your own show. There's lots to talk about in your life as well. And we can't just, you know, I thought the book will take us half an hour at least. Um, okay. So what is the book called? Uh, I can't open the Wi-Fi, so I've forgotten. Um, it there is it is. Called... Let me hijack your mind. Alec okay. Padamsi. Yes. Let's just mention Ryle's dad for the few people who don't know. Uh, the Doyen of Theatre. Vandana is going to take us through everything right now. But uh, very quickly, what is this? In, in the essence, what is this book about? Uh, it's, a, it's a guide to... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so... Alec was really, um, he was definitely, he didn't want an autobiography. He wanted to say something else. And he was kind of like uh, of this opinion that if an alien landed up on Earth today and kind of looked around, they'd be kind of thinking, what the hell are these people doing? Going backwards rather than going forwards, as you were saying this morning. As I always say. Completely, uh, as a mother of two teenagers, Absolutely, go forward. So, so basically, he was saying that why are we carrying on with all these social norms around us that really don't serve us, that don't work, especially for the younger generation that he calls Youngestan? And he like busts those in the book. And he also gets you to start thinking about how you can reclaim your mind, as Ryle put it the other day when we were talking, and really start living your life without blaming others and saying, this is wrong out there, that's wrong out there. What about just doing it? So it's like a modern day Plato, almost. (laughs) Uh, With rules and regulations (laughs) of how to evolve the society and looking at... Give us a couple of examples. For example, you said social norms, etc. And we have so many in this country. God forbid, each one should be taxed. Go ahead. Okay, so, uh, so uh, okay, here's one. So, uh, you know, throughout our schooling system, at the end of every year, we have to take those dreaded things called exams. And really? only then do we go to the next level. And that happens all the way to university. And then when we start working, we have appraisals every year. So everything's appraised, right? But there's one contract that two adults enter into of their own volition, and there's no renewal. It is marriage. And he says... Why don't we bring in the idea of a five-year renewable marriage? You stole license? that from me. <laughs> you stole that from me. I, I, I've been speaking about this. I, I'll give you proof on the podcast. It's been there from the first year. I've been talking about the exact and same it, thing. When was your podcast? When did you do your first podcast? 2014, I think. Uh, 15, yeah, well, uh, it, Alec Badamsi predates all of that, Cyrus. So you probably got it from him <laughs> and then did it on the podcast. Damn it, I should stop talking aloud. People just steal my ideas, even if they're in heaven or whatever. What the hell? This is ridiculous. So anyway, his no. whole point is, um, look, nobody ever thinks about, well, most people don't think about their marriage. They just keep going through it. I think you're right. And it gets boring. And so what he's saying is every five years, both parties have to renew. Correct. And bring that in because that would be a much better way and yeah. people would be happier. Yeah. I've evolved that point to a whole thing about a voting system where you look at the entire year or two years or four years or five years as you have it and you sort of evaluate Fairly. Absolutely. And if either party finds it's unfair, then obviously because you're, you need a quorum of one or a mandate of one to end it. And that's good enough. So I think that's... It's a f- well, Cy- Cyrus, Cyrus, obviously, um, Alec was in your mind when you talked about that too, because there's another chapter in the book, which is all about taxpayers and how we should set up a union of taxpayers who refuse to pay tax unless they get the services that are required. Superb idea. On point. Wish he was still alive. This is These are all my thoughts. I completely second them. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I, I'm, of course, there, there's a point where we take it too far. Like when you fight with a cop and you say, I pay your salary. I think that's a little bit too much. Um, uh, but by the way, I'm all for, you know, deriding cops who misbehave because they're terrible when they misbehave. Like standing at attention for VIPs. I think that should be outlawed. Does he mention that? Lining up the streets uh, of South Mumbai and causing traffic jams <laughs> well, and, more well, entity, and putting their stomachs out and their hands up. And, you know, I mean, what the hell is that? 30,000 of them there while crime is rampant in other parts of Mumbai. What's going on? But uh, let me not make this my show. This is your show and your book. So let's bring Ryle in because she's been quiet. Also, I don't know what angle she's in. It's like she's in China, uh, who also abstained from voting <laughs> against Ukraine. 
And is that the Simi Garewal background from Rendezvous with Simi Garewal, the same white absolutely, thing that was there in the show? Absolutely not. <laughs> Can we expect to see Simi Garewal behind this that? This is the Ryle, Ryle background. Huh? Oh my God. So Ryle, take us through, through the this whole thing. How did this start? How did one, where did Vandana come in uh, to this whole thing? Was your dad trying to write a, uh, as she said, was it some sort of biography, some sort of uh, story about himself and then it segued into... Sure, sure, sure. So, you know, dad, he's always writing notes. You know that, Cyrus, you know, his little pad, he's always said and writing everything down, which, you know, made sense to him and all his different ideas. It used to be like Cyrus owes me 20 rupees and things like that. <laughs> uh, more than that's that. in there too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah the day, he was he was pretty sharp with his money, Vandana. I don't know if that's mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, first hand report. Yeah. Sorry, Ryle, go on. So when he was writing all his notes, you know, obviously he wanted to uh, he wrote a, his first book in the nineties and he was very keen, you know, since then to do another one. And he had all these fantastic ideas which he wanted to share with everyone. And I think finally he got to meet with Vandana. And they spent so much time together, six what's years it? in the process what of writing. Remember, what's the Vandana book? connect? How did Vandana get into this whole thing? Vandana, do you want to tell us? Or right? So Vandana, right, right, right. So Vandana, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was um, a friend of Kiki's. You know Kiki Watsa? Uden Are we going to go Kiki? through like 200 people to get to the source of this story? Because that's going to be scary. <laughs> I'm going to just say yes to save time. No, no. Kiki, yes. Kiki, of course, very famous Brazilian yeah. footballer. Uh, Vandana, am I Kiki. right? Is that how it happened? Yeah, that's Kiki? right. So uh, Kiki's daughter-in-law, Glenda, works with me and she summoned Question. me one day. Is Kiki, is Kiki a real name or is it a pet name? Because if it's a real name, I worship Kiki. that name. She's Daddy and right, you have to say who Kiki. she is. No, but you have Pramila Lal, cookbooks. This is Pramila Lal. Remember she used to do all Pramila the... Pramila Lal's real name is Kiki. Kiki. Yeah, I, I know the name Kiki Pramila Lal. Okay. Okay, so that's basically how the whole I can't, thing starts. The podcast is cancelled. Who is Pramila and who is Kiki? They're the same person. Or oh, in the same cookbook, person. Kiki is mentioned same on person. chapter nine, page four. Huh? Same person. Same person. Yeah. How can her name be Kiki Watsa and, and then the book say Pramila Lard? That's two different names, surnames. That was her pen name. She was a very, very brilliant. Uh, what can I say? Uh, what is I would have gone with Kiki. Recipe writer. Kiki is everyone who's listening to the podcast remembers Kiki now. Kiki is. Overstepped Alex uh, bounds now because her name is the prominent name in the podcast. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Kiki. People are naming their kids Kiki as we speak. Everywhere there's a Kiki, not Southeast West. I don't know why she went with Prominent. Guy, well, I have to tell you, Kiki and her husband um, discovered Kiki? Aliba for Bombay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, really... in fact, Cyrus has a house there as well. So you have I your house. My, my wife, my wife. Please thank I'm God. the Mali. I, I just look at the grass. Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm not the one I like. <laughs> Uh, let's get back to the, the, the opening <laughs> nuances here. So Kiki played the role of f facilitator in some way. Vandana, your background is... Uh, That's true. By the way, for That's those who don't true. know, she's a OBE, right? That's right, I am. Order of the British Empire. So we have to call her ma'am or your ladyship or milord no, in this uh, Vandana. You know, par parity thing. Vandana, oh, yes. Vandana, you should be Oh, you're a sex singer. You must be speaking good Hindi, yeah? What is oh, this? you got to be joking. I grew up in the UK. I can read and write Hindi, but when I speak it, I sound like an absolute mem sub. Wow, Still. I love that. Uh, <laughs> that'll really do for our show. You can do the whole thing now as, as the mem sub. But, uh, but, but again, uh, Kiki, so Kiki was yeah. Alex's friend, realized that you have a literary background or whatever. And, and No, then, no, it was, it was really funny. Basically, um, Kiki rang up Glenda, who works with me, and she said, Vandana has to come for lunch. I have a guest who will want to meet her. And Glenda said, why? And um, she said, the guest is a Badmashri and, Z uh, and Vandana is an OBE and he'll like that. And she's British and he'll like that. So then when, so I was, I, you know, I was, I was just told. And as soon as I heard it was Alec, it was just like, I'd grown up in the UK, but I'd seen Gandhi and I'd seen the adverts and I'd read about him. And I was just... Uh, really, really excited. So I, she arranged this lunch and we just started talking. And uh, I think he liked some of the crazy ideas I had. He said, you should never have been in accounting. You should have been in advertising. Wow. And that's where it started. 
And but 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 was he thinking of writing this book or this was just the early days where you're just chatting? No, we were just chatting at this lunch, weren't we, Ryle? You were there, Shazan was there, um, and we were all chatting about you know all the different things that he was involved in. And we found out that we had a common connect through an organization called Common Purpose, and I'm a global trustee for them. And Alex, very close to them, they you know they take leaders and they cross boundaries. Um, mentally, they get leaders to cross boundaries. So he was involved with them. We were talking, and um, he really liked some of the ideas. I said that I feel hmm, you'll probably agree with this. The world is a very dominant place when it comes to men. Like if you look at our history, eighty. 80- 80% of our history has been written by men and about men, 80% of religion, 80% of art and literature. Um, if that was reversed completely and it was 80% female dominated, what would it look like? And I talked to him about these planets that I've created for something else that I'm writing. And he just said, I want you to come and talk with me in Bombay. So I just used to go and visit him. And then I think on the third visit, we talked about life, the universe and everything everything from honestly from condoms to world politics to where did that come um, from yeah <laughs> my listenership is three and under uh, i have to explain what that is why they were born because that wasn't used etc sorry go on oh. <laughs> and then and then he said to me you know i've really wanted to write a book for a long time not a biography but something that i could leave for the youth of india and um i don't know how to go about it Last time I had this person that I worked with, would you be interested? And I said, well, why don't I just come and record some conversations with us? And then I'll get transcripts and I'll look at what the themes are. And um, it turned into, as Ryle knows, 53 meetings, official meetings, and 173 hours of conversation. Um, And what you need to get, Cyrus, is I'm ADHD, right? So I have attention deficit. And and so does Alex. What a great podcast, this. Three of us, it would take 20 minutes to make one point. Fair enough. But that's the whole point, because each hour was like five hours. So I literally had a thousand hours that I had to go through uh, to be able to create the book. And... Rael, Shazam. Well, you had 10,000 different minutes because it kept going everywhere. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Then everyone came in and really, really pitched in to help get the book to where it is today. So let's understand is this more like a deal? No, no, so Vande, no, no. I was just saying there's so many different interesting topics, you know, that they've covered. So, um, you know, share with him, especially about the edutainment and the other thing that's very close <laughs> to Cyrus' heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Sorry, go on. Cyrus, we're taking over your podcast. No, I'm just trying to ADHD again. The problem is that I'm, is it more like Dale Carnegie sort of genre, if I may say so? Or, or is it actually more a biography coming out through his thinking? So you get to so, know what he's thinking and sort of that's him. Uh, and that's what you're presenting. It, it starts It starts very much with the thinking and then it goes back into his experiences and evidence to back up that thinking. Um, and it, it really, you know... And it's very practical. Exactly. And it's um, yeah. also, it really is one of its kind. I don't know what category you would put it in, um, in, in the sense that it is not self-help. It is, you know, as far away from that as possible. It's kind of a real mix, mixture of social psychology and act- action-oriented thinking. So it's social observations, observations on society and where, in his eyes, what where it could go right or wrong, et cetera, exactly. et cetera. Exactly. And, and so when, this was really damn tough to write. I'm just thinking when you're sitting and writing it, because like you said, if you go up and down all the time, you don't stay on one plane or one thought for very long. It was, it was really difficult to put it together in a coherent way. Because it all sound great, but it may not always flow in, in, in a linear sort of way for a person to follow. You yeah, know, well, Al- like Alex says in his words, yeah. well, Alex says in his words, people think in straight lines. He wants to teach them to think in squiggly lines. So each of these chapters is very different. Um, nice, let me I write that down. It, oh. <laughs> the, and, um, it's, it's interesting, when, when you were on with Manu Pillay, you were barraging, obviously, his, uh, history teachers, and you were talking mm. about how boring they are about the dates and not about, uh, you know, really getting people interested in what was going on with the people and the situation at that time. You and Manu Manu were talking about that. One of the chapters in this book is, um, uh, as I look for it, school versus edutainment. What Alex says is that, um, you know, there's a huge relationship, if you think back to school, about your favorite teacher 
and your relationship with that subject and your worst teacher and sure. your relationship with that subject. And he says it's for a learner to learn and it's for a teacher to enthuse. And so he talks about this really practical situation where Shazan wasn't very interested in learning Hindi. And so what he did, he found out from the other mothers, you know, Alec and his focus groups, went into the focus group of the other mothers. And they're always mothers, Vandana. That's a book for another day. Huh? It's always yes. mothers in yes. the focus group. <laughs> and all the mothers were complaining that none of their daughters wanted to speak Hindi. So what he did was he got a fairly good looking actor to come home and teach the girls a Hindi song, a joke in Hindi, and um, a, a kind of Hindi skit. And at first the kids were like, oh, we don't want to do this. But when this dude turned up, they were like, let's learn. And they had so much fun learning that joke. They went into school the next day, told the joke in Hindi, and all their Hindi speaking friends were like, oh my God, that's amazing. So they came back home and said, when's he coming again? And that's how they really got into Hindi. And he said, that's what education should be about. Let's infuse people, get them ignited, and then they will be curious and they'll be passionately curious to learn more. Um, you know, uh, you're singing from my choir book, or rather I'm singing from his book or whatever, because it's absolutely, I, I think it's, uh, firstly, I'm so impressed. Let me point out that you actually watched the podcast and that to the one with Manu Pillai, because, uh, you know, <laughs> our guest podcast. And Nina uh, Gupta and all of them. Oh Cyrus, my God, you, please. Oh my, oh, Vandana, I, uh, Ral, we have to give her more footage now. She's been watching the podcast. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you as and when, because I've got to be honest. Ours is all about, you know, nepotism of sorts. Um, <laughs> Which is in the book as well. <laughs> I'm sure. But but this is amazing. Uh, Ryan, you tell us, because you're also an educator, uh, in a sense, you're doing the same thing. Isn't it really strange that after so many years, I mean, Alec is spot on, that we don't understand that teaching is really not about the teaching. Because, you know, that can be learned by the person. It's about getting the person interested and passionate. I think after that, you're just freeing the mind for the subject. Hence, say, I like history or literature because it's very possible that the people around, you know, the, the environment fostered that. And But I didn't like physics and chemistry because it was just too dry and the teaching was too dry. I'm not blaming them. It's also my lack of interest from uh, DNA and not uh, the non-scientific thought process because I have to blame my parents for that. But... Uh, what we discussed with Manu Pillai, history is a very interesting subject, but you can't just give a bunch of dates to people and tell them so-and-so kill so-and-so, you know, uh, in the case of uh, Ukraine and Russia. It has no consequence. I think it has absolutely no consequence. The dates part of it, all that, as Daddy used to say, why do we need it? You just press one button and you've got it all there online, you know, you don't need to really remember all this. Well, it's nonsense, kind of being an ugly but Indian male. you do need to remember. Hmm? No, I'm saying it's kind of being an ugly Indian male. I'm not, I'm not anti-date. Um, for example, if you like history, the dates stay in your head. It's very simple to tell the three battles of Pani back to back. You know, it stays in your head. But but you don't. That's not the key idea. You see, that's not the key idea behind history. It's the characters. It's what they did. Why did they do this? What? It's a human factor. Exactly what Madhuri said. Fantastical wars. The the, the, the Hindi speaking mm -hmm. guy who was good looking and you know connected with them better and then went to the joke realm and etc. etc. <laughs> it's a human factor. So I, I've been. So, I don't know, Absolutely. Alec. Where are you? Can we bring Alec back? <laughs> they did it with Jesus. Is it possible to do it with Alec? Now, I know he did Jesus Christ Superstar. I don't want any letters in the comment section, but I'm just saying, let's get him back. It, yeah. it, well, Cyrus, I have to tell you. Yeah, well, actually, so Ryan looked at one of the versions, one of the drafts of the book, and she gets me, darling, darling, it's, <laughs> it's too light. Daddy would have gone much deeper. And I remember sitting at my desk going, oh, my God, how, how am I going to do this? He's a legacy. You know, this is his legacy. And I remember him sitting there, and I'm not kidding you. It was like he was in my head. He was he was like, Vandana, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and he was just – and then I just wrote. And and it just it, – so he's here. He's with Ra – he is so much. Every time I have a meeting with Ryle, I'm like, that's Alec. That's Alec. That's Alec. That's Alec. So he's very, very much here around us. And around people like you, I mean, your quote in the book is is brilliant. He's very tall. Um, and, <laughs> <my> quote. and <laughs> oh yeah, right, that's others. right. You asked me to write something. That is I remember. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. That oh. is um, fun. And everyone else who's written. Yeah. So, Abandana, share with us about the Alecism. That's also such a fun uh, part of the book. No. Yeah. Yeah, Alec, Alec was really good at these one or two liners that he would come up with. And I'm desperately trying to find one because my memory is not very good. Um, oh, yeah, here's one. In marriage till death do us part or till death do us boredom. So they're just like little quips <laughs> that Alec came up with. And there's loads through the book 
uh, because he was just so good at nailing it in as few words as possible. No, and getting you to just think, don't... you know, Cyrus, to getting you to think, think in a different way, think in an alternate fashion. Do not I think, I always, always, always question the status quo. I think that is something also, that he's yeah. also very, right, very good at. If I may say his love for Shakespeare plays a very important role. Yeah. Because you know, when yes. you when you love it's Shakespeare, you're looking all at political the... turmoil, all in almost all the plays, probably the serious plays, it's, it's always part of that. And of course, in the lighter plays, sexism, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these uh, things come alive in his mind, I think, from the early days also. And I'm saying just as he passed away, we reached a point where everything seems to have more meaning. I don't know, maybe mm. we imagine this or whether it's true mm. or not, I don't know. But uh, he became almost became louder as he got older in that sense, you know, uh, yeah, about all these absolutely. things. And hence, hence this book, uh, you know, came. And, and we have all his favorite quotes from Shakespeare in the book now that you mentioned it. So it's a really, when you look at it, it's a very, very wholesome kind of, um, you know, uh, a showcasing oh, no. of what daddy was interested in, uh, believed in thought that he should share with the rest of the world that you don't have to take it as gospel but it's very important to air these ideas i mean just working on the book vandana and i have like you know changed so much of our thinking wouldn't you say vandana yeah absolutely i mean going absolutely. back to the first point we don't talk about empowerment of women and the great mm -hmm. rahul gandhi brought it up again in our mindset uh the first point <laughs> <laughs> we empowers women more than anything else. If you were to vote on marriages, yeah. forget mm -hmm. India as a repressive mm -hmm. society, if you like, Locally. look at your Scandinavia. If you were to vote uh, 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 from both parties' point of view, and people are you know not holding back and saying, "Bro, I just don't like the way you dig your nose or fart in the night or uh, whatever small things like that or having an affair or bad in your career mo choices or sexism," just imagine how many marriages would last if we are honest about it. If we actually voted, and I've spoken to my female friends about this. Uh, obviously, when my wife's out of town because I do this only the night, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like that. But yeah, so I, I'm thinking he's he's always been ahead of his time. I think we don't need to go on about that. Everybody knows that. The sad yeah. part is that. But I Sarah is coming to this women's issue that you mm. spoke about. There's a whole mm. chapter on thousand for men and zero for ten, everyone no, else, right? Ten See? for men, ten, ten for men, ten for men and sorry. zero for everyone else. And it's it sorry, is yeah, all yeah. about the dynamic. It's about the social construct of gender and how we've just attributed certain factors to male and certain factors to to female. Like, um, like we we've, we've discussed this before. One then another, you bring it up, and I because I have a daughter, so these things all come alive. Mm. Why do you have to change your surname? Mm. Why the hell? Now mm. you're a Saxena Pori. I take it Pori is the husband's name. Ex husband, right? Ex husband. Okay, sorry. Fair enough. But whatever the point no, is, no, sorry. The names are there. Yes. You know, I don't want to get into yes. the personal side of things. That's that's no, fine. That's what fine. I'm trying to say is that you've got you've got the Saxena, which is the family name, the blood name, yes. if you like, and then you've yes. got the name that you decided yeah. to adapt to as well. Yes. But it's equal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why do we have to like my wife and I had this argument? I said, "Why do you yeah. want my name?" You know, yeah. and uh, initially she didn't take the surname. I said, "That was mm -hmm. great." Why does the identity mm -hmm. have to change? I would hate my daughter has an identity. Why should it become her future husband's so, identity? So, why can't so it be the Cyrus, other way around? yeah, Cyrus. One one angle is you know the identity, but the other is this. And I used to Alec and I used to laugh about this. I I did research on like loads of species that exist in the world, right? Animal kingdom, fish kingdom, everything. There is no species where the female looks after the children and the husband, the male, and the in-laws, and the parents for the whole of her life. The, the there is no species. The, the lioness is in the pride. The, the couple of lions She looks after nothing. the pride. She, yeah. look, she, she looks after mainly, her main focus is her children, right? It's, right. it's not everything. And that's... Yeah. You know that that that's. I only say this because I'm a Leo, <laughs> and I and love I'm the Aries. fact that the lazy, <laughs> there you go, the laziest animal of all. Nobody knows that lion has been given too much weightage, right? Valor, bravery, rubbish. The guy does nothing. He mates a hundred times and he hunts twice in his life, and then he gets killed by a young lion. That's it. What a life! Fabulous. All right, sorry we were uh, discussing. Coming back, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you said Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, you know, Dad in his own wisdom, in his own way, has also written his own Ten Commandments, you know, of what he yeah. feels that are, are uh, you know, would be helpful so, for you to lead, to you, lead your you'd life. You'd expect so that, that over 2,000 years, days. the commandments would get a little evolving, a little bit of, you know... Exactly. I mean, this, this is the whole point. And um, before Rael goes on to those commandments, right, his, his thinking was like, all this stuff about religion, religion is great, it, it is good as a guide because what it's trying to do is get us to be better human beings. But let's not forget that the aim is to be better human beings, not to decide 
what existed when and who lived when and who was right and who was wrong. It's actually so that we can be better human beings. So in that token, if we if we've renewed everything in our life, you know, laws change, um, society changes, why a certain other thing staying very still? And so he did his updated version of the Ten Commandments. That's what that's what he wanted to bring. And he's encouraging, and Ryle and I are going to be encouraging everyone to write their own version of those Ten Commandments. And the, the germ of the thought here also is that uh, nothing is so sacred as uh, everything, as you just mentioned, <laughs> everything moves with time. So why do all the edicts and religious traditions and scriptures, I dare say, of all the major so-called religions, why don't they evolve? Firstly, don't start me off on religion. I've lost interest in it as a concept, but that's, a, I suppose, not the right forum for that. Uh, so go ahead. What are what are yeah. the ten? Why do we need ten? Because it sounds oh, good marketing wise. I Alec again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you ten. Fine. Top ten. Yeah. I'm wondering if like Moses or whoever first came up with it. Yeah. Cyrus, yeah. I'll just read one or two of them. Thou shalt treat all human beings as equal. I think that says yes. a lot. Yeah. That's great, but thou impossible. shalt speak Have out you... when thou seest injustice. You and you know, I think this is also relevant in today's oh. context. Um, you know, obviously he didn't know what was going to happen in 2022. Um, thou shalt help thy neighbor in need, of course. Thou shalt shun dishonesty. So lots and lots. And the most important, I think, for him was thou shalt respect thy neighbor's religion. I think that was something that he believed a lot in. So it goes on like that. So that's like the kind of meat and the crux of what he was doing. I'm not against about. dishonesty. Sometimes I think dishonesty, like when a, when a person asks you, do I look good or whatever, it's okay to say you look <laughs> ter- good. Can't say you look terrible. Uh, 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 so I'm not, I'm, not thinking, I'm not against it fully. The times when dishonesty is fine with me. Uh, the neighbor thing, I would take it a little further and say, let's let's you know respect the neighbor, not the religion. The religion is just part of the neighbor. So that should, that's mm. a given. The whole idea is why should we disrespect yeah. them because of this part of them? So, you yeah. know, no, I think, but, but he was also making a bigger think, social so, comment on communism. Yeah, but the expectations the are too high. Uh, yeah. Human beings are really flawed, really. Let's just basically square scum. You know, the, the best of us are like really evil, and the rest are, oh my God, there's no point talking about it. So, yeah, I've given up. I'm too cynical. Uh, but uh, obviously, yeah. Alex still had hope. It was his last day, still had hope in the human race. My mother might have met a couple of people who were nice over the years. <laughs> I don't know about you, Vandana, but what do you think? Can we really respect anyone? Look, look at what's happening in the world. And then I, the, the I, fact that China and India abstain, what does that mean? Like, uh, because we're looking at our own areas and thinking, oh, God, what if we do something similar and draw a parallel to this? Oh, I don't know. So, uh, you know, the thing is, um, my area of expertise is around mindset. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we don't have a poverty problem. We don't have a war problem. We have a mindset problem. And so that's what we have to tackle. Right. And we talk about data being the new oil um, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, would, I would still maintain coll- collectivism in a central idea of peace should be the new oil, right? And that's what Alec would say. And that's what, you know, the point of the book is to say, listen, there's enough crap going on in the world. If each of us doesn't take accountability for ourselves and making our individual world thrive, and through that making other people's worlds thrive, you know, there's no point in existing. Take the point further, Dave Chappelle, the third funniest man in the world after uh, Vladimir Putin with his shirt off and Arnab Goswami uh, on television, uh, he pointed out that his father used to tell him, never say you're poor. Poor is a mentality. Never use the word poor. Yes. Poor is just, but it's true. never use that. Uh, it's true. If you, if you yeah, ask yeah, you yeah. Just, say, just say you're flat broke. <laughs> well, that's the joke <laughs> of it. But, 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 but it's right when you think about it because why are you poor? What's poor? It's all relative. We're poor compared to somebody it's... else. So what's poor? And and Cyrus, I won't bore you with going into it, but it is Please to do with the part of our you speak it's, I like it's to do with the part so of our brain me. called the amygdala, oh. and and that's the problem. You have a scarcity mindset, and you have an abundance mindset. I think I went to the school amygdala. With, I went to school with an amygdala. He's <laughs> <laughs> from Senegal. I, I wonder if he had an amygdala that was triggering. Okay. But you no, know, but we have this part again. of our brain <laughs> yeah. that we have this part of our brain that just triggers whenever we're fearful. And the problem is when we say to ourselves, I am poor or I have debts or I am not popular, we're starting a self-perpetuating circle in our brain, right? And, and that's why, that's absolutely right. And that's why Dale Carnegie and the, and the greats of, of that side of the world and our religious or spiritual books say the same thing. If you can calm yourself down and say, 
whether you're the biggest person in the world or the lowest, uh, the smallest person in the world, you you basically say, I am nothing. And you neutralize that fear in your brain. You you can actually go on to do a lot more. So there's a lot of science behind it, too. So self psyching in a sense. Self yes. psyching, self coaching, <laughs> perhaps better word than psyching. Self uh, yeah. Self understanding. Uh, I call it examining. You're examining yeah, rather than examining. Also, in a sense, we uh, the esteem is just lowered when you label yourself all these things. Of course. When we, of course. like we just mentioned, we all it's all relative to everybody else. In any case, so everyone is at some point poor or inadequate or weaker or yep. you know or unloved yep. is well me. But again, this is your show, so I don't want to you know go into that. Uh, let's say we have to take a break in a couple of minutes, Ryle. Ryle will bring you back for your show because this is too interesting a subject and lots to talk about. We'll never do the any uh, justice to you, which is a whole I mean your bio data they send me is longer than the book that Vandana wrote. I mean <laughs> and, and that's just the foundations you set up. The, um, unless you're you know the Aga Khan himself, I don't know. This is just amazing. No, no, that's fine. We can do whatever you want later. I just wanted to say that we're back in the theater. That's important, and we're right. on on Sunday with Broken Images. That was what I wanted to share okay. with you, Cyrus. This Sunday, it's been so okay, difficult let, for two years, but we'll do it another so, time, huh? No, let's give the date for this Sunday and Broken Images. This Sunday, right? Yeah. So this Sunday is the sixth. And it's at St. Andrews at 6 and 8. So we have two shows and we're very happy to announce eight. that our first show is Broken, full. Yeah. First show is full and uh, you can stay back with the second show in case you didn't understand it. Right? That's the whole idea <laughs> of two shows back to back. This is this is Shabana, right? Broken Images? This is with Shabana, Azmi. We have three Padma awardees with me. involved in this show. Hmm? A couple of years back, she was on a plane with me and uh, I must say she's very attractive. Really, I mean, obviously, she was yeah. very attractive as a you know actress. So I hope In this is like sexy stuff. Yeah. Conversation, we come back to that. Or yeah. I could get out of it. Is Shaman must be very attractive. Yeah, but uh, you know, some <laughs> people who age well. I, I just, I, I, I love people who age well, male and female. They just, they bring a lot of, you know, what is the right word? Grab no, no, but she's unbelievable. Yeah, Cyrus, she's doing yeah. five days of shooting right now as we speak. On the sixth wow. day, she's with us for two shows, which is not easy back to back. And she's on for the whole duration of the show. You know that she plays a double yeah. role. So, Great. you know, hats off to her. She's just one of a kind. She really is. And uh, just for the theater loving people, are, are you 50%? What's the deal now? Are we allowed to all go fully? Or Yeah, it... so right now, right. So we, were, we are at um, 50%. We just changed over to 100%. But we were just a little cautious because the people who bought seats know that it was 50%. So we're just trying to keep it that way for these shows. But obviously, when we open our show, Cyrus, on the 26th of March, which is Cyrus but, but, Unmasked with Kunal, but, but show, we will be 100%. <laughs> no, it will not be because for us, 50% is 100% because we always aim low. So that was the whole thing <laughs> that if they stayed 50%, we could say house full for the first time in 30 years. Now we can't. But then never, never, never say you're poor. Never say you're poor. Never say 50%. Not, but that's what I was doing. I said we are house full, even though we were 50%. Thank yeah. you, government. Thank, thank you, government, for locking us down. Lock us down again. It's a lovely feeling to have nobody on the road. By the way, yesterday I went to car uh, to the same studio I go to a lot. And it used to be 25 minutes in the lockdown time. And now it's already almost an hour. So st straight away, you see the difference in traffic. I mean, there are, hate to say it, uh, it's a horrible thing, lockdown, but there are a few things that I miss, like no nobody on the road, places to park, just zipping away left, right, and center in the car because people like Ryle refused to step out. So people like me had the world to ourselves. It was great. Yeah. Just shut up. You, listen, this doing? is all your fodder for the new play. This is your fodder for our new play. I wouldn't call what we do a play. <laughs> uh, I would just I would call it broken images part two, uh, but real images are broken. Um, it's a play right, on words. Broken, bro oh, we've already got a comment. Broken images is a great play. Seen the play twice. Pretty soon, pretty soon is the name of the person. Wow. Now, the parents obviously decided Who's this, this is the name. We'd love to offer them three seats, Cyrus, for the third time. Oh, uh, really? Okay, pr pretty soon. You yeah, heard that? You're on. Why not? Yes, absolutely. So what you can do is, uh, I'll just text Silvery after the show's over separately. With some contact number yeah. and address, we'll pass it on to Ryle. Pretty soon is the handle. Now, my problem is 10 other people will say we're pretty soon. But we'll, we'll have to figure, <laughs> we'll have to figure. So quickly, Okay, the first uh, three off the block. <laughs> yeah. So do it pretty soon. Uh, pretty soon. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. Listen to this. This is a, I think this is the best piece of advertising. Alec would have been proud. And the voiceover artist is also the proprietor of this entire. He's the pioneer behind podcasts in India. One day he'll be a Padmashri, Amit Doshi. So here it is. Here's our break. Hello, hello. 
Hello, 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 hello. It's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Cider Says is Cock and Bull, Cider has a great time with comedians Puneet Panya and Abhijit Ganguly. Check it out as he shares stories of his hilarious encounters with Amitabh Bachchan. On The Wire Talk, Siddharth talks to author G.N. Devi about his latest book, Mahabharata, The Epic and the Nation. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav tells us an intriguing story of the cities, their connection to Limes and Benazir Bhutto. The Pulyabazi hosts talk to Nihar Shah, assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University. They discuss how to distinguish between good science and pseudoscience. And on Ikaduka Economy, Abhinav and Dr. Junjunwala break down how interest rates are determined for loans. Do follow us on social media where IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. It really helps us. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms that you're listening to. And also remember, you can check us out on YouTube at www.ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance, Bank of Baroda, and HDFC Life Insurance. Thank you so much for making this possible. Uh, Ryle, uh, did you hear the break? Was it uh, audible? I play the yeah, keyboards. Yeah. Huh? I play the keyboards. Oh, wow. That. <laughs> that live. That's Silvery ah. joining us. Uh, Antariksh is Good morning, everyone. Hello. Uh, he's, Good morning. A, Hello. he's a producer. One sec, uh, you're no longer the producer. Vinay is the producer, right? Yeah, I'm co producer. I'm basically like a co host on screen okay. talent, is what so I'm He got told. elevated when they included a second <laughs> producer. So, congratulations for that. There you go. That's sure, a sign sure. of corporate lineage going the right direction. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Oh, that's Thank one you. thing, by the way, guys, that Alec. Uh, because uh, Ryan, is it fair to say that he was always trying to keep up? He's not one of those guys who said, Mera zamana mein ye tha, wo tha. He was always trying to keep up with trends and things. I mean, he loved that, didn't he? So the one thing he just Absolutely. was on the cast of when he passed away, sadly, was a uh, podcast, which we're yeah. doing right now. Yeah. Uh, he would have had so much. Yeah. Because he could have he done really, an Alec podcast. This, he was this, really this, That's keen. what you did. Yeah. He did a podcast to you, and then you transcribed mm-hmm. that, and you spun it a little bit here and there, of course, with your own way. But the point is, it was him talking to you, which he would have done yeah. to people. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, he was him. very, very clued in uh, Cyrus, even though, you know, technology kind of, um, you know, evaded him at times. But, you know, every day we'd get voice notes from him on WhatsApp, we'd get WhatsApp mm. messages, we'd get everything possible. I mean, of course, Annie used to type in into the, into the internet part of it, That's but fine. he was so savvy. I, 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 you know, the he body was, was so weak, but the spirit was completely there. Absolutely. That's the key point. Absolutely. You know I mean? No, no. So you have I, an Annie, whatever. You know, he was so fed up with anybody who said, you know, that they're retiring. He said, are you crazy? Yeah. You can't retire. You have to retire. R-E-T-Y-R-E. Another point. God, he did huge like workshops on that. I've been screaming. Rahel, one that I've been screaming about, especially for Indian men mm. who don't seem to understand anything but work. When yes. you leave them at 16, yes. nothing to do. They become horrible human beings. Yes. Yes. Look at the building panchayats and all these idiots. I call Guy, them assholes of the world idea. because they, they have no meaning in their life. <laughs> Cannot let an Indian Guy. man retire. You must make him the watchman of the building. Something he has to do. For God's sake. Go on, go on. Guy, you, Vandana yeah. and I will work on new workshops called Don't Retire, Retire. And we'll make sure that everybody's up and running. What a horrible moment in the and gym in the morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just uh, very quickly, in the gym in the morning, there was this... Uh, Elderly gentleman, same thing. We just picked on one of the trainers for no reason for crossing his path or something, you know. And he has this kind of behavior of a person who's idle and uh, has low self-esteem and yeah. has no that's meaning in their life. You can see that's that's because people are on the go, you know, these small things don't really get into your, your... I mean, it just didn't make any sense. The punishment didn't fit the crime, the way he screamed and abused and all that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, no retiring. Vandana is frozen, is it? I think Vandana is... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, she is. Yeah. It must be cold that's in Pune. She rejoined. You know, it's all good. Yeah, the March, winter. <laughs> oh, she's back, she's back. Sorry, Vandana, we're pitching about you. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody every saying, Parda ke piche kya hai and all that because we can see the curtains and maybe the, the intricate, Vandana was telling us about her personal life, the intricate stories behind that curtain which reveal all. That's the next book. Vandana tells you everything. Uh, uh, but but uh, guys, Silvery used to work with uh, Ryle. Uh, what was that story? Yeah, Ryle, I've... I've done two things with uh, Ace Productions. One was uh, I was a part of I was ading uh, assistant director on uh, Knock Knock Who's There, a play with uh, Carla uh, Carl, uh, uh, Singh. Carla Singh. How do you pronounce? Carla Singh. Carla Singh. And, uh, how do you pronounce Shalia Carla Singh? Right. Shalia, Carla Singh. Carla Singh. Carla Singh. I mean, what was on it? Oof. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, so that was good. That was a really fun. That was a really fun experience. And before that, I was in Little Actors Club uh, as a kid. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. So Are you serious? Oh, yeah, which, yeah. Area, which, which which part of little, like where was the branch? But you know, uh, Silas... I, I was very small. I think it was in Kolaba or Worli. Uh, 
I'm not. Oh my I god! You know, Cyrus, George, and little actors. We started it together, Cyrus, Mummy, and I. Can you remember? Remember, Sire, JB. Of course, I remember. Uh, oh wow! You paid yeah, me in cash to get the uh, You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's completely wrong of you. <laughs> Demonetization changed that. But Ryle, there were lots of young, hot moms, yeah. and that's why you told me not to come back. I remember. <laughs> I get distracted when I was all these hot moms with these five-year-old kids, and you know, they were so happy to have the kids, you know, be taken off their hands in a sense. Oh, uh-huh. what a nice job! That. Now, see, no one would retire if you give a man that job. He'd be so happy to sit there all so, day. So, yeah, right, ma'am. Like, right, ma'am. Like in movies, right? There's a there's a phrase that goes that uh, do don't work with kids and animals because they are like difficult to work with. They have all those work hours and all that. Is that, a, is that similar in theater? A little actors club. Yeah. Oh my God! No, no, we we work a lot with kids. In fact, we taught over a hundred thousand children. I have to tell you, since you brought up Little Actors Club, and the yeah. fact is that they're so wonderful. We learn so much from them. This whole digital engagement has been so different. We've had to really up our game, recurate all our you know courses, etc. So there's a lot happening, and the children we feel are simply the best. They really are far beyond adults. They learn quick. There are no excuses. They're so enthused, and they're hungry. They want to learn. They want to be able to. On the other hand, Ryle, the hmm? on, the, on the other hand, kids are horrible. And if you have two of your own, no. why would you want to see a third one? Honestly, I mean, That's really, who? If you're going to be sincere we, about that, we get the and best. Was, we get the. In the Kolaba, mm-hmm. yeah, Ryle, but then Kolaba Brands was this one obnoxious kid in the beginning when I was there the first couple of years. Really aggressive, who was physically intimidating and hitting kids and all that. I mean, he was a real exception to the normal bad behavior, which is, I suppose, acceptable. Uh, this guy was like a bit of a psychopath. Well, you, you have to label him. Uh, could it have been Silvery? Because I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah, it was me, Cyrus. Correct. It yeah, was, yeah. Right? I was the one being a brash. You, you yeah. picked up a small wood, wooden chair and bashed it on a girl's head and all that. Yeah. And then started. Yeah, it's all me. All me. A yeah. Horse, a woman, no proof. Tree, the they got no proof on me. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, but we gave him counselling and he settled down. He was very. Strange. Now we give him right? chemical treatment. Thank you, man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's on. He's on meds. He's on meds and and <laughs> basically allowed only out only on Monday. <laughs> uh, let's go. So Antarikshish Bhagirathi should be called Pawai to Aram Nagar. <laughs> Okay. Before we move on from Little Actors Club, there is a very cool question from Tarun Kaushik that has come in. He has said, uh, "What are your views on including theater as a part of school curriculum for early learners, just like music or drawing? I personally feel it would have shaped my personality differently for the better." Hundred percent. I, I mean, Absolutely. they'll be biased. I, I think Vandana would be biased as well, in a sense, because we all <laughs> support the arts, so it's difficult mm. not to. But mm. go ahead, please. And so Don't coming to that, we act. We actually do do theater, speech and drama as a subject in a lot of schools, over thirty mainstream schools in Bombay, and uh, we found that it really, really not only helps them in, in acting and all of that. It's just by the way, their personality, their social skills, yeah. their confidence, their creativity, everything possible makes you know the, the outcome is is. Indescribable. It's really, really something that must be included and, in all. And there's all a tragedy, right? No one's talking about the tragedy. I'll talk about it. Across middle class India, there are so many engineers and MBAs who've eaten up seats and then later become actors, singers, and entrepreneurs of of a different sort altogether and wasted those degrees and seats. And no one's talking about that. Shankar Mahadevan, engineer. What the hell is that all about? John Abraham, MBA. What the hell is all about? Don't do that. This is a crime because some other guy would have become an engineer or an MBA and gone into the corporate world, and you took that away from that guy. And that now Silvery and me are sitting here doing this stupid podcast nobody listens to. So just wanted to no. get that out. <laughs> my chest and, uh, go ahead. Wonder you haven't spoken for five minutes and you froze in between. So if if you're there, can you give us a sign? And if the terrorists I, have got uh-huh. you, just you know, <laughs> that's a sign. <laughs> I wow. I. I am being held hostage. No, um, I I agree with the acting um, in in schools for another reason as well. I I actually think psychodrama should be brought in mainstream to all organisations um, because I think when you act out a drama in front and you can do pause play, you know how could I change that answer? I think that teaches people a lot. So I think there's um, I, I I think not only should it be brought in through schooling, but I think it should also be. Um, used in the workplace much more. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, Vandana, we do this course where we teach life skills through drama. So there's a lot of role brilliant. play that goes on, and you know, it's they're different. We have about a, a, at least twenty different courses right now on as we speak 
which deal with different areas of de uh, development. So coming back to your question, yes, definitely, I think it's super, super important. Hmm. Caution. And going back to going back to Alex's uh, point about you know getting the learning done through a slightly, if you like, Ma Machiavellian sort of way. You, I mean, even even with the theater, you can do that, right? You can take Julius yes. Caesar and just do the, the murder, for example. And the boys yeah. who are against it and feel it's very emasculated to do all this, suddenly get interested in being senators with knives in their hands. You just do that part and from there introduce them. Or do Romeo and Juliet and, and you know, the gender reversal can happen. That's always fun for everybody. And I don't mean it in a bad PC way. I'm just saying, but young kids, they start giggling and having a good time. And then they're in the subject yeah. for a second or two or the Battle of Agent Court or whatever. So there are ways to reach people. Sometimes I think our teachers or the people who decide these things, they make it too dry and you lose people. Cy Cyrus, um, so, sorry to interrupt you, but you know, just talking about that and uh, the plays, one of the things Alec mentions in the book is, is casting Sabira Merchant to be Julia Caesarina, right? So, so to play a female Julius. And so, so, uh, Sabira said to him, you know, look at my height. She's, she's quite, she's petite, right? And he said, no, but you need to understand it's, it's your brain that's large. It's your, it's your power that's large. And, and you know, that kind of shift in a classroom can be absolutely magnificent for young girls who are thinking, you know, about, oh, Julius Caesar is all about, you know, the man becomes. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of thought processes you can change in that way too. Although to cast a bald woman as Julius Caesar would be tough. I mean, I don't know how many chicks would be like, I'll take that role. That might be a problem. Speaking yeah. of stature not being important, Ryle's mom, Pearl, who in many ways is my mentor, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, there she was, what, what was she actually, four, seven or something ridiculous? I mean, she, every inch was counted for, you know, it's like they say, it's not the, the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog. So, yeah, uh, where have we gone with this stupid conversation? We started gloriously right. and now we're just, you know, running around in circles. But we'll go to the AMAs. One last yes. thing about the book, though, or how do we obtain this book? How, how to hijack your mind? So it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon and on Crossword currently online. And it's in the stores as well. And uh, just make sure you get a copy. It's really, really something that will and seriously have your mind hijacked. It's a great, great experience. And I'll say this about Alec before we get into the AMAs quickly. Uh, uh, for those listening and watching, remember, these are the, the real Indians you want to follow. Trust me about that. These are the actual secular, egalitarian, I mean, not necessarily in his personal life, but let's. But that's too much to expect from a human being. But definitely in his philosophy and vision, these are the guys you follow. Uh, you know, I, I put him in the same. Shah Rukh Khan is somewhat similar for me. Virat Kohli, perhaps also. You know, they, they seem to have that certain uh, sensitivity that you need when you're in a posi position of leadership. And we don't have that with lots of leaders across the world, as you can see what's happening in what is possibly Eurasia on the corner of Europe. But yes, AMA time, no more lectures. What have we got, yep. Silvery? Absolutely. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored, I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. So there are two similar questions that are coming from Girish Patel and Shavik Bhakti. So I will ask them both. Uh, Girish Patel says, why didn't Alec do more films? Was there a dislike towards the medium? And Shavik Bhakti, Bhakti asks, theater actors look down upon mainstream cinema. Is this a stereotype or is there some truth to it? Or is, or is there a no, past adage? In the past, maybe? Really? Well, it is in the, in the past, no, maybe? No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Not a, no, no, I don't think so. I think Alec did Muhammad Ali Jinnah in Gandhi. And, you know, that was such an iconic role. I don't think he got something of that stature, meaning in terms of, you know, roles to play. And also, frankly, he was so busy leading his double life, double life in the theatre and advertising that I don't think he had even five minutes for film. And we we'll leave it at that. <laughs> months and months. Hmm? Sorry? Yeah. No, you're, you're right. Also, what do you want him to play in mainstream cinema? You know, I mean, he's not going to play a zamindar or some angry father-in-law or some, you know, snarling politician. Yeah, I don't think he would yeah. be up for that. So, you know. But I, I mean, think mainstream what... cinema today, Cyrus has really changed, is changing, True. especially with the OTT and everything. Yeah. I mean, there's such fantastic roles for people of all ages. Look at Nina Gupta, look at Pankaj Tripathi, look at everybody. Frankly, they have such a, such great, great portfolio. Oh, I'd now. rather look at Nina Gupta than and Pankaj I don't Tripathi, think that people... Me. I don't think that people in the theatre don't do film. I, I think that has changed completely. That's I think in the past. The, the point, I think, of the question is that the whole panel cinema, I don't wonder if you agree with me, you were in England then, uh, but we had this whole the Amol Palikar, Nasiruddin Shah, then Pankaj Kapoor, and that ilk doing certain cinema, which was 
you know, more erudite, more hard hitting, more incisive, yeah. open, uh, looking at society. Socially properly. relevant. Yeah. Socially, Socially relevant, relevant. Thanks for the words. And then there, there was our uh, Bollywood dramas, which uh, had their place as well. And so there was that divide, yeah, Ryle. There was definitely, don't you think? No, no, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, but I, he's asking now, na? so now it's a completely different yeah, now, uh, story. Yeah, and I think Alec was never complex about these things. If there, if there was a good role, he would have done it. Simple as that. But as you said, he, he just took on too much. But then he had right till the end, he had taken on too much, right? <laughs> the, the right up until the end. It's unbelievable that that we just discussed yeah. not retiring, but what what uh, yeah. spiritual energy to have that you know as the body and organs and everything else is failing, the brain is still and the heart and brain are still wanting to you know charge at that same age as uh, when he was nineteen, you know same pace he, rather. He was but he I was calling. I, yeah, go on, go on, Ryle. Yeah, sorry. No, no. I think he I think he absolutely lives on. You know, I don't think, frankly, between you and me that he's passed in any way because there's so much of him that people are still getting to share this this book, especially. And after this, we're working on his uh, Alec Padamsi Museum, which is a virtual museum online that people across the world can access. And, you know, so I just feel that he's he's he did too much and he was too big and too big a personality to just fade away into the sunset, you know? And I think that's what he would have wanted, definitely, to be known well, as. Well, uh, you live through your, your legacies in your words, and we have his words, thanks to Vandana. Are they really his words? How much are Vandana's words? We'll never know that. <laughs> till I interview her and do those transcripts. But let's take a couple more questions quickly. Silvery? Yes, absolutely. Harvey Spakasar asks, uh, Cyrus, you already talked about this a little bit. He says, uh, hello all. Cyrus, uh, how was it working with Mr. Alec Padamsi? Do you have any interesting sto- story to share on this? Also, a word on passing away of Rodney really? Marsh, please. I'll do the second part first. Really sad. Uh, one of the great cricketers of all time, Rodney Marsh, the ugly Aussies. He was part of that Lily Marsh refrain, which abused everybody in sight and caused sledging to become famous. But on that note, I'm a big fan of sledging, so I had no problem with it. Yeah. Sad, but you know, I mean, these things happen. What are you going to do? Uh, as we may talk about all the time, God, if there is one, doesn't seem to take the ones we want him to take. <laughs> he just all takes the others. Um, uh, working with Alec, great. So many stories. Um, but the thing with Alec is that he talks too much. So I'm really not a good student because, you know, I can't listen. Uh, but having having said that, yeah. So we're both talking too much. You know, I'll be talking while he's talking. So it goes nowhere. But he had so much personality, which I don't want to say that you know older generations had more personality, but sometimes I just wonder when I come to a set, I come to a shoot, nobody has personality. There's no leader, there's no towering presence, there's no alpha taking charge. So you have a certain sort of, you know, let's do things. It's 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 taken democracy to a point of absolute sense of pathetic, you know, where everybody just nobody says anything. We we shot something the other day and nobody told the DOP what we were doing. So the DOP didn't understand that we had to move in certain places and all because there was no coherence. That could never be. Alec would, and, and he set a standard for two generations of theatre and advertising to follow. There was a leader. There was a clear plan. There was a clear objective. You may not agree with it and you might go against it, but that's because you are you or whatever. That's the individuality of the arts. But he definitely had that presence where everybody knew what was on. There was a canvas and we were going to now print on that canvas. It was like that. So I, I have to tell you, uh, uh, not just me, but there's so many people in advertising and in uh, in the theater, also in the film world, entrepreneurs like Ronnie Scroll. Everybody's going to tell you that, you know, he's played a role. Uh, um, you know, Cyrus, I just, uh, yeah, I just want to add on that, that um, we got so many wonderful stories from people when I spoke to them um, that we actually put an Alec Badamsi's tips, tricks and hacks chapter. And it's got things, you know, like, um, you know, uh, Ryle was talking about writing notes everywhere. Uh, it's got how Ronnie picked up that habit and still uses that habit today. There you um, go. So that he, Ryle is Of course, Ronnie picked up right. more he notes li- along the way. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For sure, lots more notes. Um, but but that was one thing. I think what Alec was really good at, it wasn't just being a leader. Or he he saw being a leader, to use um, a, a great management guru's words, Peter, Peter Senge, he says, leadership is the capacity uh, for the community to shape the future. So whilst he was organizing everything, he coached you so that you were in charge of your universe and your 
ecosystem. And, and that's why so many of the people that he worked with are in so many amazing places now. A lot of them say it's, you know, it's that confidence that Alec gave me. Yeah, and also, you know, uh, I think at the end of the day, forget the results. If somebody really likes what they do, he loved the written word, he loved the arts, he loved the theater, he even loved film, etc. And once you, you like that, I think your passion, it goes beyond your personality and character. Your passion comes through and then that passion excites people around you and draws mm. them to you. Albeit, people will clash with him. There are lots of bad stories as well. I'll give you that. But, uh, you know, end of the day, he was like a beacon. There's no question of that. You cannot deny his place uh, 200 years from now when India's history is written. His name, I think, will be bigger than it is today. It uh, was pretty big in any case. Okay, can I just quickly end and with I one? Want to Alex? Add, yeah. Sorry. I want to add ahead, one thing ahead. there that, you know, his, his belief in social causes and his social voice, so to speak, was so loud and he really put all his abilities into that. So whether he did public service films, whether he did um, plays that related to these issues, you know, of communalism, of gender sensitivity, of all kinds of areas and um, ideas, um, I think that's really what made him the man he was. Because, you know, you can do a lot of stuff for your passion and for, you know, for your income, so to speak, your bread and butter. But to put yourself out there and make a difference, I think that is key. And he taught us all that. So that, I think, is an important thing, which also comes through in the book a lot. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ral, we'll take one quick question because we've got to wrap up in two, three minutes. Uh, last all one, right. uh, Silvery. Uh, sure. This is uh, Arpit Bansal asked this. Uh, I've never seen this question. It's very cool. He says, are there any tech platforms which have helped theater and its ecosystem or has tech not really gone deep into this? For me, it's a bit of... Um, tech uh, platforms help theater. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, say it again. Like, mm -hmm. can are I, there any I'll... tech platforms that have helped theater and its ecosystem or has tech not really so, gone deep into the theater? I, 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 I think I'll, not, I'll little... not really. I, sorry. You say, no, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you my bit on this in the sense that having done live shows as against uh, online shows, etc. I think the medium has to be live. Okay, so while we definitely use tech in a theater as much as you can, by and large, I think it, it's almost like an antithesis of tech because it has to be live. You're with an audience, you're getting feedback from the audience. The energy and dynamism of the audience is very important. It's, it's hugely different if you were alone or in the theater or at home. For me, personally speaking. So in many ways, it's like it's like test cricket and T20 cricket. It's very, very different in many ways. But that doesn't mean you can't marry tech. But then I'm not the right person for that. Vandana, on the other hand, has a PhD in technology uh, outside British <laughs> Rail or something. I don't know. She's designed something recently. Uh, Liverpool Station was you. Uh, Vandana, you tell us. This is my idea of tech, by the way. Yeah? <laughs> Liverpool Station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just blown. Liverpool Station? I'm sorry. I, my, my mind is just a mess. And this is without drinking. This is me in my drinking days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think the digital space has helped theatre in a way. The platforms have because there was no other way out for the last two years. So a lot of people have got online. A lot of people have, you know, used this medium to be able to communicate. And of course, get a more global audience, which I think has really helped a lot. But to tell you about our organization, we did not go down that route with theatre per se. We did, of course, as kind of workshops but not actual plays because exactly what Cyrus says, I really believe in the live medium when it comes to theater and to be able to, you know, have the production and be there and be connected. There's a lot that goes with that. I just did a live That's, event on yeah. Monday and an event on Thursday uh, from a studio online. And the difference in energy level is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that, you know, you have so much fun with the live audience because they're, they're half your your stuff flows from there, especially when you're anchoring or doing a show, which is not necessarily a full play, but even a play. Because your feedback comes from there, drives yeah. the energy of the of the performance, no question. But can we end with that famous story? Are we allowed to use MCBC? Because you have to use MCBC in the story. Remember, Alec, uh, we were talking about anecdotes. Uh, I remember once at some tech uh, rehearsal, he was in a bad mood in any case, and he abused George's PA. Ryle, do you remember this? And he shouted, uh, <laughs> can, can, I, can I use bad words, uh, Silvery? Just to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, that. go right ahead. Go right so ahead. he shouted, uh, hey, George, you mother chot, come here, come here. So uh, George was very upset and offended because he was on the PA and he said, uh, please, sir, don't call me all this in front of everybody. Don't use these expletives and bad language. Very sweetly told him. And uh, he said uh, on the PA, Alec goes, I'm sorry, George. I'm sorry. I'm in front of everyone. I'm apologizing for calling you a mother chot. Okay, so here it is. George, you bang chot, come here. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. I just love that story. It's just and poor George was so defeated, but he loved Alec. 
you know, since, since that's that. Um, but poor George lived, with, I mean, worked with him for over 20 years, I think. So I think he was yeah. kind of used to that. But that was few and far between, Cyrus, I have to say. No, but Ryan, that's not a bad story. It's still humor. For I me, it's know, a beautiful story. And, and, you know, I, know. I, I mean, and I he, he made his point. <laughs> he made his point. I mean, technically, he was I, right. As a lawyer, if you look at it, you know, he apologized <laughs> for abusing him and with this word and called him another word. He made a, I think it was okay. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah. True. Anyway, this world of cancel culture, let's not encourage anyone to go berserk. All right. Sometimes it's just a joke. Just keep taking it with a pinch of salt. All right. Uh, Vandana and Ryle, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry I spoke too much. Next time we'll give you more of a chance. Uh, women empowerment and all that. Silvery himself considers himself female. Silvery? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna play Juliet in the next play. <laughs> God forgive but whoever plays Romeo. Himself, uh, Listen, considers himself female means it's a fantastic thing. Don't put it down. Yes. Well, and you uh, will join us two times. Well, with the fact of the matter is his mom can't find him a partner anyway, so he's going to be his own partner. This is a new marriage. <laughs> when I began with that, this is a new concept now. The union of oneself. There you go. Sure, yeah, All right, so true. the book, can we, can we see the book as we say bye? Once again, it's on Amazon and the book is called, <laughs> let me get it right. Let me hijack your mind. There you go. Um, Silvery? Great. Silvery. Yes, yes, sir. When is, when is your birthday? Uh, 12th of June. 12th of June. Are you going to give me the book? I oh. will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll okay, pay with EMI, sir. but uh, Ryle, you know me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Thanks Happy so birthday. much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. All the best. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter, on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. Love fighting? We've got you covered. Check out our show, The Fighting Goat, where we, the voices of the internet, Arjun Chipalkati and Somesh Kamra bring to you crazy weekly action on your favourite combat show, The Fighting Goat. Be it commentary, breakdown, predictions, analysis of styles and techniques. And of course, your round of favourite fighters. <laughs> you can listen to us every Thursday on the IBM Podcast app, website and all major podcast streaming platforms. Are you looking for finance products and services that can enhance your personal finance experience? Are you looking for a space to talk about your financial product or service? And are you looking for a crisp talk show where the conversation is all about money? Well, your search ends here. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta and I'm host of the Pesa Pesa podcast. And I invite you for the conversation about your personal finance on each Monday on the IVM podcast app or the website or on any podcast streaming platforms. See you folks.